Hello, my name is Liz and welcome to the Tiny Treatery. And today I am making a little cake shaped like a house to give to my friend for a housewarming gift. They moved into a new apartment, not a new house, but I wanna make an apartment shaped cake. That doesn't sound quite as fun or cute, so a little house it is. I'll meet you in the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen. So naturally, first step in making a cake is making a cake. Preheat to 350. I have the butter and sugar in my mixer bowl. I have my dry ingredients here, egg and vanilla in here, and buttermilk in here. So first, cream the butter and sugar. Scrape down the sides as needed. For those of you at home, which bowl do you think I'm going to pour into the mix next. Lock in your answers. Egg and vanilla. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really much of like a how-to channel. I don't even know why I'm like doing this part on screen, but I am. I don't think anybody watches my videos to learn how to make a cake. There are better sources out there, but you know, if you've been watching long enough, you probably got used to the process by now. All right, so we have the dry ingredients left and the buttermilk. What do you think is gonna happen next? If you said alternate the dry ingredients with the buttermilk, that is a correct answer, I think. But for some reason, this recipe just says to put all the dry ingredients in and then pour the buttermilk in at the end. I've seen different recipes do it different ways. I don't know if there's a particular reason to do it one way over the other, but obviously doing it all dry ingredients and then all buttermilk is easier. And since that's what it calls for, I'm gonna do that. Except I'm gonna pour only like half in. Mix it up slowly. Don't want too much gluten development to get like a weird textured cake. And then I'll pour the second half in. So I made like three changes to this recipe, which is linked below. I have made it the correct proper way a handful of times and it is a very good recipe. So, you know, why mess with perfection? But I have reasons for why I mess with perfection. So the first thing, I did not have cake flour and the store that I went to didn't have it either. So I had to make a cake flour substitute. And in order to do that, you take like 85-ish something percent of what you were gonna use in all-purpose flour and then fill the rest of that 15-ish something-ish like that percentage with cornstarch to lower the ability for the gluten to develop because all-purpose flour has like a higher protein content or something. More gluten will be developed with all-purpose flour than cake flour, so cake flour cakes have a softer, finer crumb or something. I might have said some of that wrong, so I might have to come in with a fact check clip later, but yeah. Point is, cake flour is softer and like superior or something and I didn't have it so I had to make a substitute. The second thing is that this recipe called for some number of whole eggs and then additional egg whites. And I didn't feel like doing that so I calculated the weight of how much total egg was being put in and I just did that weight in, in whole eggs. So I am adding more yolk relative to the mixture itself and less white than I'm supposed to, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be fine. And the last thing is that this recipe is half as big as the actual one. So that's not a change with respect to like the contents, but it does make it different. So I don't know, but honestly, cake is cake. And I kind of like don't believe the girlies when they say that like baking is a science and it has to be totally perfectly exact. Cause you know, I've done a lot of things in the time treatery where I am messing with ratios ever so slightly just out of convenience. And usually what I get turns out okay. Obviously the changes I make have to be like within reason. I can't do something totally ridiculous, but I just don't think if you slightly change the amounts of something, you're gonna get something like totally terrible. Unless it's something that's like super particular and finicky, like maybe macarons or something, or like tempering chocolate. I don't do either of those things. So what I'm talking about is like basic batters and cakes and cookies. I just think, you know, if it's a little different, it's okay. Because honestly, really, some people are making these things with measuring cups. And do you think everybody in the world has the same exact size measuring cup? Absolutely not. And it's probably working out for most of them. So I just don't think it's that serious. No. Buttermilk is so stinky, I hate it. I don't even understand how that's like an ingredient. Like it's literally just like rancid milk. Yeah, I'm just making a sheet cake and then I'm gonna cut out the shapes I need for my house. I hope this is enough batter. Cause I have made the whole recipe and tried to make a sheet cake with it and it was like too big. It was like questionable, like bursting at the edges. So I was like, well maybe half will be fine and it'll be like a thinner cake, but now I'm nervous it's not enough. Maybe I should have done three fourths, but I didn't want to do that kind of math. Well, I tried my best to smooth it out. It's very, very thin, and I have like no confidence that it's going to be like even across, which will be a problem when I'm trying to like cut layers for a house that I would like to be relatively even to one another. But this is what I have, so 
I'm gonna put it in the oven probably for like half as long as she says since it's so thin and we'll see what happens. Okay, here is the stage we are at. I have eight little rectangular layers of cake and a bowl of buttercream. First of all, it has occurred to me that I probably made a mistake and I didn't actually wrap the layers. I put parchment between them so I could get them apart from one another without breaking them, but I probably should have like wrapped them in plastic wrap or something because they may have gotten freezer burnt. But it's only been one night. Yes, this is the outfit I wore yesterday. If you disagree with that, please leave a comment and increase my engagement. So I hope it's not too freezer burned, and if it is, my friend is just gonna have to lie to me and say that it tastes good because I am not making another cake. So, I don't think I'm gonna need all eight. I am thinking I'll use six, because this is how tall four is, and then maybe two more, and then I'll have to like shave them down to get the roof angle, which I'm very nervous about. But yeah, I think for now, I'm gonna go with six layers. That's gonna be my cake, and I just will have two left over. So, let's get a little crumb coat on. There's probably a lot of noise coming from over here in some of these clips because of my portable air conditioner that I forget to turn off sometimes when I film, sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, this has been in the freezer for some time and I think now I need to cut an angle so I can have the roof shape on top and I am extremely nervous to do this. I don't really have like a great approach in mind. I like have the vision of where I want it to be but that doesn't mean I can execute it. So I'm gonna take you over the decorating table and we're gonna have a very tense little montage of me trying to do this. Is it really a montage when it's just like one thing going on? A tense time lapse? Whatever, let's go. Okay, so it's definitely not even, but I did my best. I've never like sculpted a cake before, so that's my excuse. I think if I tried to keep going where I do see that it is uneven, I would just make everything worse. And I'm lucky it looks as good as it does, so I'm gonna put it back in the freezer for a little bit, and then I'll put an actual true outer white layer of frosting on it, and we'll get to like decorating this little house up. past. Uh, this is the first thing I'm filming. I don't know what's been said, but I assume it all makes sense. So right now I'm going to start making some decorations for the little house. So I printed out this stock image of some roof shingles and I'm going to melt some chocolate and I have some short in here just in case I feel like it needs to be a little thinner then I can get it. And I'm just going to pipe out these shingles and I'm going to kind of treat them like royal icing transfers. So I'll just have a bunch of chocolate shingles ready to go so that when the cake is iced, I can place them on and I'll have a beautiful little roof. I think in doing this, they're gonna be a little irregular. They're not all gonna look exactly the same, but that'll kind of give me a good shingle vibe anyway, so I think it'll be okay. This is fine. I'm calling it fine. Let's make some shingles. Me 
me from the past again on the same day as the shingles clip, but after a shower. So in the oven is dinner. It has nothing to do with this video, but while the oven is hot, I made this tiny amount of cookie dough. It's a fourth of the recipe from sallysbakingaddiction.com cut out sugar cookies, link below. And I'm gonna try to make some little windows that I can pour isomalt into for like a glass effect. So I need something to actually pour them in to keep the shape of the window. I think I could actually just use my square little cookie cutter, but then I would only be able to do like one at a time and that would be really annoying having to like wait for it to cool and keep the rest of the isomalt hot. So I'm just gonna make four little window cutouts, pour the isomalt on those and those will be my windows. of the next morning because I was too tired to melt and pour the ice malt last night. So that's what I'm going to do now at seven in the morning. So as you can see, these cookies are pretty wonky. The thinner ones are a little burnt, but honestly, I kind of think that adds to the vibe. I think it looks good. And the dough was like a little warm maybe. So if I had been working with dough that was colder, it probably would have stayed in shape better, but I didn't care. So here we are. So I hope I can get a couple windows out of this that are like acceptable. So I'm going to melt this, put a little blue food coloring in it. I guess like like windows are not blue but if I just left it clear then when I place it onto the cake with white buttercream it's gonna look white anyway because it's gonna have that behind it so I think the blue will make it pop a little and you know we can all pretend that blue is like a glassy window type color in our heart and then I'm gonna pour these and hope that I get enough out that I can put on the cake and they look okay gonna move these to my decorating table and then wait for what feels like forever for this to melt. All right, making progress, getting closer. Still a lot of chunks left, but we are on our way. So I think it's fully melted now. I'm gonna take it off the heat and try to let it simmer down a little bit. Yeah, see, it's getting a little more clear as the bubbles are going away. And then add this. Oh, that was too much. Oh God, can I get some out? I didn't, no, I didn't mean for this to happen. Well, we're here now. That's way too dark. <sighs> I think I have to do another batch. This is what I get for rushing. Here's my awesome plan. I'm gonna pour most of it out, but not all of it. Just leave a little behind and let that dye the next batch. I hope this works. Here's the bag of ice malt, by the way. Thought it would describe what it is on the back, but it doesn't. And I forget what it is, so maybe I'll put a little thing on screen to explain what it is. You could just melt sugar and do this, but I think that's harder because it might burn and this won't burn. But I don't know exactly like what it is that is making that true, whatever. Okay, so I kind of actually made a third batch because I thought the second color was still not light enough. And you know, I'm just starting to think it's never gonna be good enough because blue is blue and windows aren't blue. So I'm just gonna stick with this. And now I'm gonna pour it in this tiny pot because I think it'll make it easier to pour into the tiny, tiny cookie. Okay, so this stuff becomes like sticky and impossible to pour pretty quickly. So I gotta run over there, bye. Didn't go amazingly, but it didn't go horribly. I mean, that one spilled over. This one was crooked on the bottom, so it seeped out through the bottom. And then I had moments where I like got little droplets on the border, which I didn't really intend to do, obviously. But I think I have enough here to get like at least two to three windows on the house, which is all I needed. All right, I have my canvas layer. It's not perfect, but um, I am intending to kind of add a little more and make it look like siding. So it's not intended to be totally smooth. Anyway, I have all my chocolate shingles. I have my windows and I didn't show this, but I did think to use some of the extra dough to make a little door. So I have that. So I have all my materials. Let's assemble the house.
Okay, so the house has been created and we have a studio audience member here today. <laughs> this was harder to do than I expected, particularly the roof because the shingles kept melting in my hand as I was putting them on. And you probably can't see it from the videos I have shown you, but there's like some fingerprints on it. So rips my friend, but they're just gonna have to get over the fact that there's fingerprints on their cake. And I don't know why some of the shingles have like weird, I guess it's buttercream that got on them, but also some of them just look scratchy. I have no idea what that is. I considered like painting over it to fix it, but I just got too lazy. And then the windows, obviously uneven. And I wasn't even sure if I wanted to put them on, but I decided to because I put all the work into making them. At least the door is cute. I think the door and these little heart cookies and the, the cobblestone path, the buttercream cobblestone path worked really well. So those are cute. And I didn't show the little flowers I added to the pond on the camera, but I just thought it needed something. It was too, it was too plain. Might still be a little too plain, but it is what it is. So because this is for my friend, I cannot cut into this now because I am not taking this to them for a couple more days, but the video has to go up tomorrow. But I have planned for this. I made an extra baby one. <laughs> it is not nearly as neat. I did this in probably like 20 minutes, but you know, really the, the point was just how exciting it would be to bring it out here and you to see that I had an extra, extra tiny one. So I can cut into this and taste this one. Would you like a slice of house? Absolutely I would. Okay, it was in the freezer. I always do this. I always put things in the freezer before my taste test because I'm like, you know, I want it to be like structurally sound, but then it's like really difficult to cut and eat. So this one only has three layers as opposed to the six, I think the other one had, but it's a baby, so that's why. Okay, studio audience, you're free to taste it. <laughs> What's that face for? <laughs> Cold. Oh. Cold. And the frosting is like too rich for me. Uh -huh. Too buttery. What's your opinion? I know it tastes like good cake. <laughs> oh, the shingles are good. Really? Yeah, it's like a nice addition. And we have the evidence here in the audience. Most normal people will think it tastes fine, but I'm just really picky about frosting and stuff like that. I used Lando Lakes, like fancy butter for this, because they were out of like the generic butter, and maybe that's why. Maybe I need to stick to the generic low tier butter because this is like too fancy. That's pretty much it. I should always have a studio audience member when I do my taste test because I talk a lot less because it's embarrassing that somebody is watching me. So, mm -hmm. Can I interview you? Yeah. All right, Liz. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what was the most challenging part of this bake? That the, the fact that the shingles were melting as I was trying to put them on, that was really irritating. And making and making the squares for the window, isomal windows. I mean, when I can't think of another question. Uh, what would you do differently if you were to make this again? Oh, wow. I mean, it's adorable, so the answer could be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really love the windows, but I don't know what I would do to make them better. I mean, the roof is also not like beautifully done. That could also stand to be improved, but it like, it's pretty good. For the windows, instead of cutting out like a middle circle, I might try to do like four by fours, but two by two, so it's like four. So it looks like more like a real window. That's mm, all I can think of really though. And then finally, how does it feel to be um, the best tiny house cake maker? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's such an honor to be here. And you know, I just, I do it for the fans. And um, thanks for watching and subscribe for more tiny treats. <laughs>